Uh, yeah, so I very nearly destroyed my car while trying to fix it. Ugh. And chances are good that if you've watched a YouTube video on how to replace the spindle nut or the front wheel bearings on your car, you might be in trouble too. All right, I am gonna be perfectly honest with you guys. I have never done anything like this before, so fingers crossed that it goes smoothly. Hey guys, and welcome back to the WT Farm Girl channel. We are going to be working on the car today. Now, I don't normally make a lot of car videos because there's like a million of those out there. But this particular one, I really couldn't find much online about it. At least not, not what I was looking for. So we're gonna take a look at this. Now, if you are a girl, I want you to know that if I can do this, you can do this. And I'll show you the tools that you need to do this. Replacing the entire hub assembly is a lot more straightforward than trying to replace the actual bearings. Because the bearings require specialized tools that your average person isn't gonna have on hand. Now, to replace the entire setup, it's more expensive. But I think it's gonna be a lot easier for us to do. Let's try it. All right, so here's our box. Uh, your local parts store will most likely not carry this if you have an older model vehicle. This is a 2004 Toyota Matrix, and she is, let's do the math now, 16 years old. 16, and she hasn't had any issues until this year. This year we went through and replaced all of the brake components, front and back. However, <laughs> recently, it appeared that uh, I was having issues on the front wheel again. Now, the sound of your wheel bearings going out, from what I understand, is very similar to your brakes going out. So, first I heard a chirping when the car was driving. Not necessarily when it was braking, but I would hear it chirping. And I thought, well, there must be some dust on the brake pads. No big deal. But it continued. I didn't get louder. It just continued lightly chirping. And then after, I don't know, maybe like a month, I began hearing <laughs> like the sound of like brake pads gone and now you're on metal on metal. I thought, ooh, this doesn't sound good at all. Now you can kind of see the brake pad back here, back behind here. So I could look at this one and the other side compare them and say, yeah, they both look brand new. And I was also feeling the rotor, okay? So this is gonna be really um, gouged up if your brake pad is gone and you're on metal on metal on the rotor. So this is actually still pretty smooth, so that's golden. So I could safely kind of rule out brakes. Now it did get worse when I go over bumps or when I turn. Both are clues that it's not necessarily your brakes, but maybe your bearings that are going bad. So eventually, <laughs> it came down to a really awful clunking grinding sound when I was driving, and it would spontaneously happen out of nowhere, or maybe after a turn. Hard to say, but it was just like, you'd be driving, also like, <laughs> you're just like, my gosh, we're all gonna die. And trying to coach a 15-year-old with a driver's permit through driving through that sound on icy snowy roads, probably not the best thing to do. But this is one of those things you're gonna wanna get fixed as soon as possible. So if you're going 70 down the expressway and your wheel stops turning, guess what you're gonna do? <laughs> you don't wanna find out. So we are going to hopefully get this done. So based on her age and the fact that everything is rusted down there, a new wheel bearing is about 20 to $30. Dirt cheap. But getting it out and getting it back in for the average person is really tricky. 
Furthermore, you run a good chance you're gonna break something anyway and still have to replace the entire hub assembly. So might as well just do it from the get-go. Now I know some of you are saying you can test to see if your wheel bearings are going bad by jacking your car up off the tire and chickling it back and forth. If there's play in it, then that means they're going bad. However, after reading online, I found out that just because there isn't play doesn't mean they're not going bad. They could still be going bad even if your wheel feels solid. So, food for thought. Give this video a thumbs up if you think that it's gonna turn out good. And even if you don't think it's gonna turn out good, still give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it, it helps me out. It makes me feel better about this whole mess. Okay, one thing to keep in mind is you wanna loosen your lugs on your wheel before you jack up your car. Um, the other thing you're gonna have is you have your center nut in here. That's going to need some PB Blaster, because um, I'm pretty certain this thing is going to be really seized up. Don't stick your face too close unless you're wearing safety glasses, because it might blast you in the eyeball. We have our wheel lock. Make sure it fits before you just start ratcheting it on. That does fit pretty good. Make sure it's in there, because these are aluminum, and you don't really want to strip those guys out. So we have our breaker bar. All right, we may need to get a breaker bar. Ooh, look at this beauty, it's a Harbor Freight special. Let's see if she'll do the trick. I take this off and then work on this lug or if I work on this lug first and loosen it and then take this off sometimes they have a cotter pin in them so if you can actually see your, your nut get out a flashlight and look and see if there's a cotter pin now this one does not have a cotter pin however it is notched right here okay so um you have a, just a little bit of a problem because these are the type of sockets you want to use with something like this. Even if it's an air powered, you still want to use the black ones. Um, you guys were very good to tell me that these are designed to not shatter, whereas uh, these could shatter just based on the pressure. So this uh, was used on the truck, I'm guessing for the wheels. Look at the size of this sucker. That's definitely way too big. However, we don't have one for the car. This is the largest socket size Eric has in black. It is obviously not the right size because this is hexagonal, not, I don't know what you would call that, <laughs> sun star shaped. <laughs> Alright, you guys have been amazing at sending me tools and stuff. Most stuff that I would never think of even getting. And, um, one of you got me this amazing giant socket set. Um, it's by a subscriber named Michael, and he actually works on cars too. So, this is what he uses. Okay. I don't know if that's even the right size. Maybe it, maybe it uses metric. Hey guys, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. It really helps me out and I appreciate it so much, especially since it's taken me 10 hours to get this thing done. So hit that thumbs up button. And if you are not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Even though I don't normally work on my car, there's lots of other crazy new stuff that I get to try out and you'll probably enjoy it. Just go click over on my channel, thumb through some videos, and hit that subscribe button. So you never know what I'm gonna be doing. 
I mean, please note, remember how we mentioned that uh, the hub spindle seemed to have a divot in it and then the uh, nut also seemed to have a little notch in it too and I thought it was for lining them up. Well, it turns out that it's actually a locking nut. And if you try and take that off without unlocking it first, you're gonna seriously mess up your axle spindle. Yeah, that's kind of a big issue that I didn't see in any, none of the videos I watched, including South Main Auto, which floors me. I, he didn't say anything about that. He did a Toyota and uh, maybe that particular Toyota didn't have it, but none of the videos I watched online had anybody referring to that locking nut on there. The worst thing I saw was a cotter pin, which if you break a cotter pin, yeah, you can buy them for a dime a dozen at Tractor Supply. But yeah, this is this is gonna be a sticky point. Good news is, um, Advance had it, so did AutoZone, and I went to Advance, and they were actually cheaper. Um, again, this is not designed for an impact. Um, I'll just make sure to wear my safety glasses, maybe a full body mask. So step one is we have to punch open the locking nut. And uh, they don't carry those tools. You have to order them from the manufacturer and the one that they were quoting me was $100. Not joking, for, for something that was the equivalent of this. 100 bucks. Uh, I'm pretty sure I could get this for free at Harbor Freight. So we're gonna try this and see if it works. All right, my apologies if you can't see this. Again, I'm not a mechanic, so I'm not used to having to position cameras for working on cars. Ooh, I feel it moving. I think it is. I think it is. All right, uh, I bent it outward as much as I could. Um, I ended up getting a smaller diameter flathead screwdriver. If you have one that's more chiseled, it'd probably be a little bit better. Um, this one allowed me to push it in. And then, this is actually a drill bit. This has got more of a wedge head to it. And uh, this is 6-8, if you're wondering. And uh, I used this to kind of push it open a little bit more. And then I used a um, bigger screwdriver with skinnier screwdriver together to kind of um, wedge together and pry it open more. So it still is a little bit flat, but I think we're going to go ahead and pump it off. So again, all we're trying to do is just loosen it right now. We're not really trying to take the whole thing off just yet. definitely coming off <clears throat> but just because it's coming off doesn't mean it's gonna go back on so um sometimes these have something on them to um, secure them back against the wheel and I don't see anything on here um, hopefully this is coming off okay without stripping anything off uh, okay so we've got a knot right here and a knot right here that have to come off the uh, brake caliper unit now South Main Auto he pulled the whole thing off as a set if you watch other videos some of the guys will take every little piece of the brake off and then yeah, so this was all replaced, so I'm gonna assume this is still good. I'm just gonna do like South Main Auto, pull this off, we're gonna hang it up here. I did get a light. Um, so for the Toyota Matrix here, it's using size 17 millimeter socket. Um, I am able to break them by hand, and you're gonna laugh, but they are in backwards. In backwards meaning that from this side, you go in reverse. So, going this direction, no, going this direction is loosening them, and this direction is tightening them. I think that's I think that's correct. 
They've already got the bottom one loose. I just have to get the top one, which is a bear to get into because it's so tight. Gosh, I can't even get my socket back in there. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I like to keep my sockets with my nuts just to make sure that everything is together. Yeah, so. All right, so we should be able to pop this guy off now, I think. Hmm. So I might have to bang on this a little bit. You don't want to hit on this part, we're going to hit between. You know the joys of uh, working on your car in the winter time is that you don't really have a backup car. But I have to give my daughter. So I'm gonna have to try not to cry and put it all back together right now. <clears throat> but on the plus side, I, I think I have a pretty adequate idea of how to do my brakes now. <laughs> all right. Time for round two. Hopefully we will get this thing taken apart and put back together again, fully. So we have it taken right back to where we left it before. We've got the brake uh, caliper up there. We've got the rotor sitting over there in the barrel. And this is where we left off. So um, we've got to loosen these two bolts right here. Um, the castle nut right there. And that uh, cotter pin is toast, so we're just gonna spin him right off cotter pin and all and we've got new cotter pins that should fit there okay and let's see I think he stays and uh, this guy's gonna stay and then this guy is another castle nut on the bottom end and he's gonna come off and then that should allow this to come off right here hopefully hopefully it'll come off but I mean man look how rusted this thing is. So I mean as rusted as it is it just doesn't make any sense to replace just the bearings on the inside. You might as well just take this whole piece of crap thing off and just put a new one on. Oh and uh yeah Eric said that apparently I didn't have it jacked up on the frame last time. So this I had been told by somebody was the frame of my car versus this. You don't want to put it on here and I had a trim piece that was plastic that was always right here too. So Eric said that the frame is actually this back here. That's why it's up a lot higher. Also, if you have both wheels in the air on the front, you can, in fact, pivot the wheel that you're working on forwards or backwards in order to get behind it a little bit better. Which I found in another video, but doesn't really apply to me because my other wheel's on the ground. But I was able to move it just a little bit. So let's go. My threads look good, so that was the part that I was concerned about um, because of the little divot that they put in this. So this is the locking nut. Uh, I don't know if any other vehicle makes besides a Toyota has a locking nut, um, but obviously you can see the indentation right here. This looks just the same. It looks like a standard nut. So all you do is uh, you find your indentation and you take a punch and you punched it in. And we're gonna do that at the very end. So because we have a replacement, we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of this. Some people do reuse them, but I, I don't know that I'd recommend that. But this entire assembly comes with a new one through Moog. So we'll just use the Moog version. All right, now to get your, um, your ball joint down, you don't wanna bang on it like this. Not a good idea. So instead you tap on the side of the holder at the top. Okay. 
All right, so this has been doused with PB blasters like a hundred thousand times, and it still is not wanting to release. All right, so we're gonna go this route. I know you guys say you get better leverage pushing down and pushing up, but I can't push down because it's, yeah, opposite side. Getting somewhere with this. I actually did loosen it with this breaker bar versus the drill. Wow. Man, what a difference. This took over the impact. Can you believe that? That's crazy to me. This did a better job. <sighs> Look at that. Holy crap. Ladies, can I just say breaker bars? Two feet or longer. Just get one. You won't regret it. And away we go. Alright, for the moment of trios, we're gonna take those four bolts out and uh, hope that this thing comes off like that. That's a plan. I, I'm going with that answer. So these are hand loose up here. The four nuts, bolts, whatever you want to call them. And we've got one. And we've got two, maybe. Okay, so we've got both our nuts. We're gonna set this aside. And you're not gonna believe it, but this ball joint actually feels like it's pushing out. So I might be able to just pop it off. Really rusted. I'm gonna put my knee here just in case. I don't know what to expect, so. All right. <clears throat> and there it is. Push him out. Wow, I did not expect him to press out so easily. Look at this. I figured I'd have to whack him out, but he is like, he's like, okay, yeah, let's get out of that sucker. Give me a new pair of shoes, mom. We might have to take these bottom three bolts off, which I really didn't want to have to do, but um, because that castle nut has got a pin stuck in it, and um, I can't fit a socket up there. It's gonna have to be a wrench, crescent wrench. Crescent wrench will not do that by hand with a pin in it. Let's see what size we've got on these guys. 17 mm. All right, so. It should. This one. That guy's off. If you have a newer car and it's not rusted up like this, you could probably get that cotter pin out and get the castle nut off. But unfortunately, I do not. Hey, yeah, things like this, I like to try to keep track of which one went on which side. So I've got right and I've got left. Okay, so those are both out. So this should be able to come off. Let's just see. <laughs> Maybe. Alright. And then this should be on the out. Woo, looky there. We got this whole thing out. Yes! <laughs> that was the worst part, I think. I think. So now we have to take this bottom thing off right here because we need to reuse this piece. All right, so we actually have like a, I don't know, 12 inch extension that we're using to pop it up. There is a little notch in this rounded plate so that you can get um, a tool in there. All 
right, so the breaker bar once again took the cake for winning. I stuck it in the vase, put the breaker bar on it, and it was like a piece of cake. Um, however, even though I got the castle nut off, I did not get this part off because this is a pressed piece. I forgot. I kept thinking there's some sort of magical solution. Alright, so you guys want to know how bad this is? Like, I can't even turn it. Hardly. I had to put a lot of pressure on it <laughs> to get it to turn. So, this probably is putting a lot of stress on my engine, and it's also probably sucking a lot of my fuel mileage. So, gosh, right now, nah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> You don't hear any sounds, but it's hard to turn. Is there a plug in that hole? There's a plug in your hole. Oh. All right, so hopefully at this point, we're gonna get it back together. So, I put Eric to work on getting the stuck cotter pin out of this thing. So if you have a cotter pin that's stuck in here, first, pay specific attention to which end had the little legs sticking out because the legs have to go back in. Kind of like putting pants on. You gotta stuff them back up through the main hole. All right, here's a nice new part. You can see it's not rusty. Um, it is worth noting that this part from Moog is equipped. It's equipped with a shoot. My battery's going dead. An anti-lock braking system, which my car does not have. So Eric found these little plugs to plug the extra holes. Um, not sure why that's the only option, but that's what they have. So, my battery's going dead on my camera. Alright, I had to switch to my phone because my camera totally died and I didn't think to bring a battery charger. And that was the second battery, so hopefully this phone will do it because otherwise... Yeah. <laughs> um, as I was starting to explain before my battery went dead, this... Where is it? Right here. See, Eric put, this is a rubber plug and this is a little tiny screw. Um, your speed sensor and your anti-lock braking system go right here, which my car does not apparently have. So, any of you mechanics, feel free to put your comments down below on that issue. And uh, I ordered it online. This was the only one they had for the Toyota Matrix 03 through 08. So I'm guessing the newer models must have had the ABS, but it would have been nice if they could have supplied like some sort of plug system to make it fit in the car. Maybe it doesn't need a plug. Maybe it's fine without it, but I don't know. It We'll see how it looks when it goes on. Let's get it up there. But first, we need to get our um, ball joint on. I, I think, yeah. All right, so... Here's the ball joint, and here's the hole. You can see that? That's where your cotter pin goes. So let's go get a couple cotter pins. We're gonna need one for him, and one for the tie rod. <clears throat> and cotter pins are cheap. This is what they look like. See, it kinda looks like a, like a pin. It's got, ah! It's got two little legs that you bend apart. So we're gonna set those off to the side. Whew. Man, it is getting cold in here. Man, oh man, oh man. Anyway. It's going to torque him. Not torque him. It's going to ratchet him in. So, as soon as you can see the hole through it, just put your cotter pin through. You don't have to bend them a huge amount, but just enough. There. All right. So there it is. We got the cotter pin in the hole. So now this thing's ready to go up.
first bottom two screws in, and I've got the last one, which is um, like this. So the axle will stretch, <laughs> it will stretch and go back in once you get the bottom put in. So I did, um, I didn't put the last one in. You wanna kinda keep the bottom two screws a little bit loose so you get a little bit of wiggle room. And then you can wiggle your axle shaft back in. Remember the tines do have to line up. So if it's not going in, don't force it. Just kinda wiggle it back and forth until it finds its right notch. All right. So I think we're getting it. We got. Okay. Again, don't over torque anything until you get other stuff put back in. All right, so we've got these guys lined up. Um, this guy has not been lined up yet. We still have to get him lined up. We're gonna put them on the same way we pull them off. So that means the nut goes in this way. Got one. Uh, we're not going to torque it down just yet because we do want to get our. That's a break. Ball joint in. Okay. Castle nuts right here. And this is going to seat itself. Go back to our other. Okay, pray that you do not have rusted cotter pins on your car because it will go so much faster. So finally, I figured it would take me about an hour and it did. I did end up drilling through it. Um, it's not always going to work depending on which direction your cotter pin's going in. You might have to take the entire assembly back off again because this was getting in the way. I was just barely able to get around it. Now, you will be breaking drill bits, so have plenty on hand. I think I went through like three of these. Um, probably pushing a little bit too hard, but you know you're hitting the cotter pin when you see lots of tiny little flecks start to fly out because the cotter pins, I believe, are aluminum. Maybe not, but they're softer. They're softer metal. If you happen to snap your drill bit off in there, like I did, don't worry. You can probably get it out with a large magnet. Which I used one of these. You can actually see a drill bit right there. Just that uh, I keep sticking it down the hole and pull it straight off. Don't slide it. Pull it straight off it's like a sliver. Like just bloop. Pull it straight out. So that worked pretty good. Um, yes. So now. <laughs> uh, now we can get the castle nut on and the cotter pin in that. And hopefully the rest of this will go together smoothly. Hopefully. That's the last cotter pin, so I, th I think we're good. Let's give it a shot. Actually, I think it's supposed to go the other direction. But... All right. So here we have our cotter pin. Yeah, I know I probably put him in upside down. He probably should have been crosswise, uh, but there's his legs. I don't think he's gonna be going anywhere. exciting actually we have to put the next item on and that is this guy this is the spindle nut the directions are on here it says torque to 216 feet pounds per feet pounds per feet so we've got our uh, socket we got our brand new nut let's twist it on Ooh, she's going on nice and smooth. Oh, that is such a relief. You don't even know, like, what a relief that is that this is going on so smooth. Look at 
Okay, that's as far as I can go. Yeah, see? That's good! That means that I took my uh, dimple out nice and easy. All right, so we're gonna put this puppy back down and get her torque to specs. And from what I understand, you wanna get that done before you lower the car because if you put weight on this axle before everything's tightened down, you could end up damaging your ball bearings again or your wheel bearings. I don't know if they're ball bearings or they're needle bearings or the bearings. I wouldn't recommend a torque driver for this just because it's touchy work. I mean, I'm sure a lot of shops do, but if you're brand new to it, probably not the best thing to do. Hey, look, I can do it like this. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Awesome. All right, now it's on there tight. Now we can go extra tight. Okay. Now I turned it until it stopped, until I had a little kickback. Now I'm gonna get the torque wrench and see what it's at. <clears throat> this is Eric's brand new torque wrench. It's a tech ton. Actually, I think he got it for the tractor. Uh, this is a big boy. This is not your normal torque wrench. Uh, but I don't remember if his other one is damaged or not because he tends to like to use them for other things. Um, so let me see, we're at 216, I believe. Okay, so we have like a bunch of numbers down here. You really just want to loosen the bottom nut, I believe, which is this thing here. And then you're gonna turn this as like a dial. So I want it to twist on up to, I'm gonna go all the way up to 200 and then clack it in at 215. 215, I don't know if you can see that, but there's the 15 and then it's up to the 200 line. Oh gosh, I don't even know if I have enough weight to torque with that heavy. <sighs> Ooh, I think I tore some stomach muscles trying to do that. Okay, so he's on good and tight. Now the last step on this guy is dimpling right here. So you see we have the notch. Now we're gonna divot this right there to keep it from turning off. All right, so you put it down to 185. Let's see if that's up to snuff. Yep, you hear that click? Okay, it's definitely at 185. Yep. That 200, so I'm gonna call that satisfactory. <sighs> There's a good chance it actually might be at 216, but um, yeah, I'd say it's close enough, it should be good. So we'll go ahead and punch that. I'm sure your hand-eye coordination is a lot better than mine, so you could probably do it two wax and be done. Okay, next is the router. Router? Rotor. Rotor. Router is what you use with your computer. <laughs> now, to make it easier to get your rotor lined up, just get an extra large nut. It's just going to act as a spacer. Put it on, and then you can screw in your lug just a little bit. Just to kind of keep them in place. Keep them cinched up nice and tight. We got another one right here. Remember, they have to be extra large so that they're not like spinning into your threads. You want your legs to spin into your threads, not the knot. There we go. See how he just moved backwards? And this guy is going to probably move backwards too. Okay, excellent. Now we have to get the brake on. All right, we got the brake on. Um, if, you, if your brake slides off fairly easily but you're having trouble getting it back on, check your brake brackets. Sometimes the brakes flop around a little bit and if you shove them back either way, then you'll be able to get it back on. I had a heck of a time getting these lined up in the back. So let me show you. 
It seems like it'd be straightforward, but for whatever reason, for me, it's not. Okay, so we've got one right up here, and we've got one down here. Yeah, for whatever reason, I just can't, can't get them lined up. Sucks. Fortunately, my little finger fits right in here. I have tried using screws to line it up to no avail. Just don't smash your finger because that would suck. Oh, I think I got them. Yes, I did. Top one is lined up. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I got it, guys. That was so much faster than yesterday. It took me half an hour. Half an hour to find both holes yesterday. Whew. All too often on these tough nuts, I end up spinning it the wrong way and it comes back off and then I have to start all over again trying to find the lineup. Sucks, but yeah. Newbie issues. So this is the setup that we have currently. We're going to straighten the wheels so it's straight forward. And then uh, we're going to take these off. And then we're going to put the tire on and put all the lugs back on. First, I'm going to check the lug specification for this car to make sure that they are torqued correctly. Because I'm pretty sure they were not. And then we will lower our jacks down, pull them out. And there should be no more sound. It should be done. But regardless, that was a bad bearing. So according to what I read online, 76 pounds per foot or whatever it is, is what you torque uh, the matrix wheels to. There it is. The nice thing about a torque wrench is you cannot over tighten because it will stop. It's got that breaker, that clunk clunk, that keeps it from going any further. All right, guys. <sighs> She's all put back together. I'm so excited. I'm gonna go take a nap in a hot bathtub now. I've been outside since nine o'clock and it's like four o'clock, so I really wish I had a heated garage, but it's okay could have been worse. It could have been 10 degrees outside, but it wasn't. So always look for those things to be thankful for. My wheel didn't freeze up. So um, and those of you who think that you can't do it, if I can do it, you definitely can do it. Uh, you might have to get some tools or borrow someone's tools. Maybe if you've got a buddy who's got tools in his garage and doesn't mind his garage being uh, taken over for a weekend. Thanks for watching guys. Love you guys. And uh, until next time, take care and have an awesome weekend. Bye.